Hey guys, it's Melvin7 here. Today I'm bringing you Transfer Rumours slash Roundup Episode 6. Now, I didn't forget to upload this se uh, this series. I was in Manchester for two days and I just couldn't really record. Like, I only brought my phone and uh, I know the quality isn't great here because the lighting, but I am moving later this week. So hopefully my new actual house, because this is student accommodation, will have a lot better lighting and I'll be able to make better quality videos. I'll also have a flat toe out soon, but anyway, that's why I haven't been able to upload. I really enjoy this series and it will be daily to the best of my ability, but uh, yeah, I just couldn't upload for the last two days. So anyway... The first story isn't really a transfer thing, but I wanted to cover it, and it would have been better if I'd covered it on the day, but it's the De Gea rumours, and uh, I'm sure you know what um, these are, and it's that he was involved in a, well, a sex uh, scandal, like a, a rape charge. He didn't actually do it, but he set up the meeting, apparently, between Ike Mon Monain and uh, Isco, two Spanish players, and um, he's denied it and all that, so I agree with Spanish journalists at the minute. Innocent until proven guilty. Now I'm a Man United fan, people are going to be like, oh yeah, well obviously he'd say that. But I said that with Adam Johnson as well. I mean, as soon as he was convicted, then yeah, I hate him. And if that happened to, to De Gea, if he was found guilty of this, then I would hate him. Honestly, I would despise him, no matter how good he is. I just don't want that at, at our football club. I don't care how good he is. It's just, it's just bad. Like if he was uh, to be charged late, like, I would lose all respect for him, and it would, just, oh, it would be horrible. But for now, he's innocent, and let's hope he's actually innocent because this, this would be like the worst thing that could happen, um, really, because he is our best player, and uh, yeah, we just can't afford for it to have, um, to be true, but. I'll make a full video when it's like all over. It won't be until after the Euros, I would imagine. But after that, there'll probably be court cases, trials. We'll, we'll have to wait and see how long this drags out for. But anyway, on to the actual transfers. So the first one linked today is uh, Kante to Manchester United. Now, he's linked to a hell of a lot of clubs. And uh, I think it's a Telegraph that are linking him with Man United. He's linked to Arsenal. He's linked to Chelsea. He's linked to PSG. I think he's linked to Juventus as well. A, a few other teams. And I'm not surprised because his rumoured release clause is 18 to 22 million, which is ridiculously cheap for a player that's starting for France after one year in the Premier League doing amazing stuff in the midfield. Just a pure workhorse, Makaleli type player. And... Um, Providing we don't get Pogba, who are more hopeful than expectant that we do, um, then yeah, Kante is the next best option. But will he sacrifice no CL? Because he, he seems really excited with playing in the Champions League. Will he sacrifice that for one year, potentially? Because I do think Mourinho will get us back in the Champions League. So would he sacrifice that for a season? We'd have to wait and see because Arsenal are interested. Chelsea obviously don't have the Champions League either. And as I say, I think PSG and UV are interested. My personal opinion, I think he'll go to PSG. But we'll have to wait and see on this one. The next rumour I've got, again, is today. And this is one that just gets linked every single year. And it's Cavani to Arsenal. Now, Cavani, in my opinion, is just such an overrated striker. I don't know how people can compare him to the world's best. Compare him to the likes of Lewandowski, to uh, Benzema, to Higuain, to Aguero. You know, all these world-class top strikers. I didn't even mention Suarez. Like, seriously... Cavani is not on that level. I know he gets played on left wing a lot for, um, I was going to say Argentina, what the hell am I on about, for uh, PSG. But in the African Cup, in it, Af oh my god, did I just say that? I meant Copa America, African Cup of Nation? What the hell, man, I've just got up, that's my excuse. But anyway, Copa America, uh, Uruguay got beat by Venezuela, I think, Rondon got the win. Winner, uh, they got beat 1-0 and Suarez wasn't playing. Cavani was their main striker and he did absolutely nothing. Now, fees reported for Cavani are stupid. 40, 50 million with like 200k per week. Are you mad? Like, seriously, this is one that should have happened a few years ago. Then maybe he'll have been a better striker. But to be honest, I don't think he's better than Giroud. I mean, a lot of people might disagree with me. But generally, from what I've seen, he seems to perform against Chelsea in their CL, and that's about it, so uh, I, I just, you know, if Arsenal get him, it's definitely not a signing that worries me, but considering every club seems to be linked every single year, 
I don't think it's going to happen. Anyway, the next player we've got linked is again Pogba to Real Madrid, but this time it's a swap deal supposedly, and it's a uh, Cruz going to Juve. That's what Juve want anyway. It's not rumored that Real Madrid would do this, and then Pogba going the other way. Obviously, they want cash as well, Juve. But uh, Juve seem to be linked to a hell of a lot of players. Like, are they trying to rebuild? I think they've won Syria three, four times. Obviously, they got. Was it in the in the final last year of the Champions League, if I remember correctly? I think it was. My mind's went blank. But anyway, um, yeah, they seem to be linked because a lot of their players are in, aging, a couple are injured. So they, they just want to try and get as many as possible. This would be a great deal for both sides, to be fair. Um, that would mean Pogba takes Cruz's spot in the starting eleven for Real Madrid and Cruz goes straight into Juventus's. So... It would be logical, but swap deals very rarely actually happen in football, so I don't expect that one to happen. Pogba will probably go to Real Madrid, but I don't expect Cruz to go the other way. Next player I've got linked is, again, uh, Lukaku linked to Juventus. He's linked to Chelsea, he's linked to Man United, he's linked to, uh, I think it's Bayern Munich, and a whole host of other teams. Now... Obviously, his father said he should go to Bayern Munich or Manchester United. Whether we're actually interested now, because Zlatan looks as though he just needs to sign the deal and he's in, uh, remains to be seen. But Juventus, interested in Lukaku, that would be a fantastic move. He's young, he would fit into their team alongside Dybala, especially if they lose Morata, then it's a replacement for him. So I think that would work, and I think it's possible. Next player I've got is a player I've just mentioned, Morata. He's linked to Manchester United and Chelsea. Apparently he prefers Man United, but he won't go if Ibra joins. And uh, I don't think it's against Ibra. He just knows that Ibra will be the first uh, team striker. And I think he wants to be the first team striker, which is fair enough. But in my opinion, I will prefer Ibrahimovic just for a year. Because Morata's quite young, he's 22, but we've got Martial, we've got Rashford. There's links talk big talk of Mbolo so if he did join there's three young strikers there we wouldn't need another one that's just a couple of years older Ibrahimovic's experience is invaluable even if he's only here a year he could be here too he hasn't signed the deal he might not even come but likelihood is he probably is so a year of Ibrahimovic would be better for our club on a whole don't get me wrong I think Marat is a brilliant striker and he'll probably become world class but so will Martial, in my opinion. So will Rashford if they're nurtured in the correct way. Mbolo, if we're linked, uh, sorry, if we get him and if we play him correctly, then maybe him too. But that's the thing. We've, we've got potential. We now need experience. So in my opinion, I would prefer Ibra, which would leave the door open for Chelsea to sign Morata. I think that's the most likely out outcome. And if Lukaku goes to Juventus, then I think Morata will go to Chelsea. Anyway, next uh, players, we've got a, a whole host of released players. Clubs have released a lot of players, Man United released uh, two youngsters that I haven't really heard of. They released Nick Powell, who's played in their first team. He's went on loan a hell of a lot, though. Uh, I think he's only played for the first team a couple of times. And uh, Victor Valdez, who literally played twice for the first team, he's been released. And uh, I think the uh, Valdez and Kolo Toure for Liverpool are the two biggest names, I suppose, that have been released. There's obviously a hell of a lot of others. Uh, Falcao's been sent back to Monaco. Um, I'm not sure about Pato for Chelsea actually, is he? has he been sent back after his loan? I'm, I'm not too sure, but anyway, uh, Colo Toure and Victor Valdez are probably the two biggest names, there's a lot of other players that have been released by clubs obviously, but they're the ones that I thought you know most people would be interested in. Next player we've got is uh, Wijnaldum, <laughs> Newcastle must be sick of all their players getting linked to other clubs, but this time it's Roma, because Pjanic looks as though he's got set for Juventus, he's about to sign, according to Demarzio, it'll happen very soon. Uh, so that's basically done. So now Roma want a replacement, and it makes sense to go after Wijnaldum. He wants to leave the championship, and uh, I think this would be a good move. Uh, a lot of clubs are linked, though. Would he want the Premier League? I'm not entirely sure. I don't think that's a deciding factor. So I think Roma are a big possibility, and uh, we'll see what happens with that one. Next player, we've got Falco, who, as I mentioned, was sent back on loan to Monaco. He's now linked to Middlesbrough. Now, uh, apparently, they've got a good relationship with Jojo Mendes. Uh, Middlesbrough, I'm not sure how, but um, I can't remember. I should I should obviously have this written down, but uh, it was said in an article or something. But uh, 
Anyhow, Falcao's wage would have to be dropped substantially. I, I, I just don't see any club paying him a stupid amount, considering he he scored one goal for Chelsea, four goals for Man United, I think. Now, Middlesbrough, the pressure would be off, so as to speak, and I think it would be a good move for them. And uh, he's still a high-profile striker. He's not prolific, but he's well-known. So it could be good for Middlesbrough, uh, especially since it's free, if they can get his wages down, which I think may be the main talking point. If if Falcao really you know, wanted to come to the Premier League again after two failed spells just to show that he, he's got something left, then maybe he joined, but I'm not sure. Monaco's tax-free. He's probably getting the original wage that he was for Monaco for however long his deal was, which would be stupid, like 200, 250, 300k a week. So I'm not sure if he'd leave because it's easy in Monaco, like to be fair. So we'll have to wait and see. I think it would be a good signing for Borough, but can they reduce his wages? Can they convince him to join? Anyway, next player, we've got confirmed bid for Berahino. Watford, Sky Sports reported this and uh, it's the only solid bid as of yet but it does show that Watford are trying to get players. I mean Tony Pulis is a very funny character when it comes to Berahino. He won't let him go but then he didn't play him like as much as he should have last season uh, which kind of cost West Brom and they were in the relegation battle for a while and then obviously it was apparent that there was only like three teams fighting for two well, fighting to escape relegation, and only one of them would, and that happened to be Sunderland. But, um, yeah, Barry Hino to Watford, I think that would be a good deal. Watford could, be, could become a force. They could be a dark horse. Their story this season was definitely underwhelmed uh, because of Leicester's ridiculous season, obviously, which you kind of expect. But Watford did do very well, and they seem to be going in the right direction. I think it was harsh to sack Kiko Flores, but it shows that they just want to improve. They definitely do. They got to the semi-final of the FA Cup. I think they finished in the top half. If not, they finished late 11th, 12th. They finished safely in mid-table, though, with no real threat of going down. So I think they can build a solid team. And uh, if they get better, you know, that'll help. Now, the last player I've got to talk to talk about is a 20 million bid for Troy Deeney again. Confirmed by Sky Sports. This is by Leicester. Uh, this is probably to either partner Vardy um, or because Vardy is going to Arsenal. He won't decide that until after the Euros. And literally, I'm not sure if he even knows what he wants at the minute. But uh, 20 million for Troy Deeney. That's very steep. I mean, he scored 13 goals for Watford. But uh, the fact that it got rejected as well. I, I can't see Leicester bidding more. Like They're not Man C. They're not going to like keep increasing until someone exactly... Uh, until someone actually accepts the bid, but 20 million, I just don't see him being worth that. So, if Watford want to reject that sort of money and then they bring in Berahino, you know, they, they've got um, a Galo, they've got Dini, they, they could have Berahino, that'd be good. But as for Leicester, um, they, they were linked to Slomani, but they haven't put any solid bids in, so I don't know if that's real. But 20 million for Troy Dini. If they'd have signed him, would have been a good signing, but I just can't see them rebidding now. Like, 20 million is extortionate for Dini, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I think this one's dead in the water now. But uh, let me know what you think. Is there any I've missed? Let me know in the comments, and I'll add them into a future episode, as I always say. Hopefully you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video, and yeah, peace.